Hey gang, it's the Data Center dude, Nick Howell, here to give you a quick overview of configuring LACP with a Synology disk station. Also with the Cisco SG300 series of small business switches. Well, this one example, we're using the uh, SG310 port. Uh, there is a 24 port variant as well, but the interfaces and configuration is almost identical. Uh, the only difference is between the uh, SFP Plus ports that are available on the bigger switches that are able to do 10 gigabit. Uh, this one is SFPs that will only do one, but more than enough for what we need for this. So what I wanted to call out, a couple of things before you get all this set up. Uh, I've got two tabs here. One's the Synology, one's the uh, Cisco switch. Uh, and I'm going to assume you've done your initial setups and everything uh, for, the, for the purpose of this video. Uh, I've got two pings going on the bottom here. On the left side, uh, I've got the Cisco SG300. And on the right side, I've got the Synology. Um, as you'll notice, it's IP200 and 201. Um, the reason I wanted to show this to you live as it's going is it, you'll, the Synology will drop a couple of times as we're making these modifications, just as the interface is cut over. So real quick, cut and dry. Uh, if you haven't plugged them in, make sure you got four cables all plugged into both the Synology itself as well as uh, port one through four. You can use any of them. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you know which ports those four cables are plugged into on your, um, on your Cisco switch. First things first, we're going to come into, let me show you where it is, just in case. You go into your little Synology start button, whatever they call that, control panel. Under system, you get a network. And we're actually looking at, first and foremost, make sure you give it a name and a gateway, uh, just in case, so that it can get out to your router. Uh, that should be your router's IP address, so it can pull DNS and all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, if you're smart enough to be doing your own manual DNS, then you probably don't need to listen to this video much more. But uh, four ports, you're going to see them connected online. Uh, you're going to see the one that you've manually assigned an IP address to, and the others are just going to have the uh, variant addresses. It looks like it pulled them from DHCP for whatever reason, but it doesn't matter. Uh, what we're going to do is click Create, and we're going to create an 802.3 AD dynamic link aggregation group. Click Next. Choose the select all or just select all four interfaces in there. Click next. Same configuration we had before. Be sure and leave jumbo frames disabled for now. I would not try and mess with that at the same time that you're doing this. You can always come back to it. Requires some complex configuration. And just click apply. Now, if you watch the ping down here, you'll watch it drop off uh, as it's building this, uh, what Linux calls a bond, link aggregation group. We'll give that just a second to come back online. Shouldn't take much more than 10 to 12 pings. And not even that. And it's back up already. So while this screen's clearing out, we'll go over here to the uh, SG300 switch. At the same time, you're going to come under Port Management, Lag Management, Link Aggregation Management. And you're going to, on this screen, you can set up multiple link aggregation groups. Now, what a link aggregation group is, is you're taking uh, multiple physical interfaces and putting them into one logical interface. So you could do this for two ports, for four ports, for all ten ports if you want to. Uh, we're going to do it for the first four, so let's uh, select the first group and click Edit. Get a little pop-up here. Uh, we're going to give it a lag number of one. We're going to call it Synology. Uh, enable LACP, and we're going to pick the first four interfaces and right arrow them into the group. Click Apply. And that's saved. Click Close, and you're going to see the Synology drop offline here again while it's doing the magic behind the scenes. Again, 10 to 12 pings should be back up fairly quickly. While that's coming back up, the most important thing to know is if you're in here in the GUI, for you Cisco administrators, uh, you, you understand this, you have to do a write mem or uh, some variant of that to save your configuration. You still have to do that in the GUI. So after you make these changes, be sure you come up here and click Save. Wow, it's going really slow. There we go. Uh, make sure you change that to your running and you want to save it as your startup configuration. Click apply. Okay. And it's working. And it's done. Basically what that does is it takes the running configuration that you've modified and copies that configuration to the startup file so that anytime you reboot the switch or lose power or anything like that, it comes back up in the exact same way as you configured it running. Hope that makes sense to everybody. That's it, guys. That's all you really needed to know. If we come back up over to the Synology, now you're going to see not four interfaces, but you're going to see one bond. And if you go down to the link aggregation tab and do physical devices, you see that, in that four physical interfaces 
are made up into one logical bond that is now contains the IP address. If you want to go further, you can get into jumbo frames. It works the same way, uh, but I would do some reading up on that before you do. That's it, guys. Uh, take care. Enjoy. Hopefully this quick video got you uh, configured in some link aggregation and some LACP. Later.